Young Marco will now join his father and uncle and embark on a great adventure at a very young age. Upon the Pope, who was still not elected in 1271, the Polos did not want to wait any longer and set out to inform Kublai about what had happened. First, they stopped by Jerusalem and met with Teoboldo of Piacenza, the papal envoy. They asked him for permission to take the holy oil from Jerusalem. Teoboldo fulfilled his wishes and sent the Polos away with a letter to Kublai Khan explaining the situation here. On September 1, 1271, the cardinals elected the new pope after three years of long negotiations. This elected new pope was none other than Teobaldo Visconti. When the Polos heard this news in the Armenian port city of Ayas, they were very happy that their friend was the pope. However, this news would cause a further delay in fulfilling their duties because the new pope was inviting them to Akka. The Polos were compelled to return to Akka. The pope greeted them with a feast. Kublai Khan wanted 100 Christian priests from the Polos, but Teobaldo, who took the title of Pope Gregorius X, gave them two priests, one of whom was Nicolau de Vicence and the other Guillaume de Tripul. Because the new pope did not care much about the Christianization of the Mongols. The Polo caravan, which immediately set out to return to Kublai Khan, took the two priests with them and continued on their way. Due to a danger that appeared while passing through Armenia, the two priests did not want to continue on their way, fearing for their lives. Having come this far, the Polos, who did not want to waste any more time, left the priests there and continued on their way. The Polos travel across all of Asia. Marco Polo, in his travels, talks about the regions they passed through on the route, the architectural structure of the cities, the trade goods and the cultural characteristics of the peoples. The first part of his work, titled The Book of Europe, describes the events from the departure of the convoy from the city of Akka until they reach Hanbalik, the capital of Kublai Khan. The fact that the history of the Mongols is mentioned in detail in the European book also makes this section very important. The Mongols, which we watch through the eyes of a European merchant like Marco Polo, are not as savage and barbaric as it is known. After all, Marco, who lived among the Mongols for nearly 20 years, is no longer a European, but is used to looking at life like a Mongolian. So much so that in some parts of his work, Polo, who describes all non-Christians as pagan and evil, describes the Mongols as people with courage, virtue and honor when it comes to the subject. About the Mongol warriors, Marco said, in battle, they are reliable and victorious men. They are extremely brave and very ambitious, they care little about their lives, which they put in all kinds of danger without caring, he expressed his admiration. Although the journey was prolonged due to an illness that Marco Polo had in Bokhara, it is estimated that the Polo caravan reached the city of Hanbalik in 1274. Even though the Khan honored them and gave a banquet on their behalf, he wanted to know what they had been doing all this time, Marco said. It is also recorded that the priests, who were not sent despite Khan's request, angered him. According to some historians, Niccolo Polo gave his son Marco Polo to Kublai Khan as a servant for this reason.